Oh, hi! I'm Chris the Conqueror, and I have arrived to enslave your entire planet. Oh! Oh, oh hi! You caught me time displacing a variant of myself. Speaking of variants, let's talk about the time traveling supervillain Kang the Conqueror. Hello, welcome to Comic Tropes. I'm your host, Chris. This week, Kang the Conqueror made his live action film debut in Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania. That means he's probably being exposed to a lot of new people, and I thought it would be a good time to take a look at the comic book history of this major Marvel Comics supervillain. Now, there's an interesting thing that goes on with some of Kang's stories, and that's the concept of retconning, wherein a published story from the past has its meaning changed retroactively by a new story. We're going to talk a little bit about that, and being a time traveler, Kang's history can be a little confusing, so I'm going to streamline that and talk about the basics of Kang the Conqueror, by his major writers and artists. But before I go too far, today we're talking about variants and I want to promote myself talking about a variant cover that I've done for Dynamite Comics. The campaign is now live. There are details in the description box below, so please check that out. I'm really excited about this cover that I drew. There are details there on how you can get it as well as a bunch of cool add-on extras from both Dynamite and from me comic tropes. So, without any further ado, let's discuss Kang's non-linear history. Kang the Conqueror first debuted in Avengers No. 8 from September of 1964 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. His appearance has remained largely unchanged since his debut with green robes and purple accents and an iconic blue face mask. Kang is a time traveler, hailing from the year 3000, who uses futuristic technology to easily subdue the Avengers. However, even his first appearance is a small retcon. Kang shares his origin, which includes that he was a character who had first appeared a year earlier in issue 19 of Fantastic Four. That issue featured the team looking at a historical exhibit that implies someone in ancient Egypt had the cure for blindness. The team uses Dr. Doom's time machine to head back and get info, only to go up against a man named Rama Tut, who had access to futuristic technology. That issue was also by Lee and Kirby, and Avengers explains that Rama Tut was a younger version of Kang. Rama Tut and Kang are the same character from different points in his own history, but another early appearance introduced the idea that Kang has variants, or other versions of himself, from places where timelines went in different directions. In 1968, Avengers Annual 2 featured a new character, calling himself the Scarlet Centurion, who pits the Avengers against an alternate timeline version of themselves. This issue came from Stanley's protege, Roy Thomas, and artist Don Heck. After the Avengers win, the cosmic entity known as the Watcher speaks directly to us, the reader, and explains that the Scarlet Centurion was a version of Kang that came from a divergent timeline. Other important storylines at this point in time include a 1965 story where Kang falls in love with one of his subjects, Ravona, who is injured and placed in stasis. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has now given us a Kang with the same origin, costume, and abilities in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania that's featured in the comics. They've also explored the idea of variants and divergent timelines in their show Loki, where the main character met a variant they called He Who Remains. At this point, Kang became a pretty regular recurring enemy for the Avengers, and always a really top-tier big threat for them as well, they'd slowly expand a little bit at a time on his backstory. It wasn't the focus of his stories, but we learned that he came from the year 3000, that he had conquered the future, and, looking for a new challenge, he went back in time to conquer not just the world, but the world at all stages in time. 
early appearances by Kang name him as Nathaniel Richards and imply that he got his time travel technology from an ancestor, which could have been either Doctor Doom or Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four. It's been implied that Kang could be a descendant of either one of these men. Future writers began having fun with the inherent paradoxes of time travel. Writer Steve Englehart pit Kang against Rama Tut in 1974's King Size Avengers No. 2. That issue saw Kang kill one of the Avengers, the Swordsman. It also developed Kang's goal of finding a mate so that he could have an heir, as he was after the Avengers member Mantis. The following year, Englehart had Kang go up against Rama Tut and Immortus. Immortus was another Stan Lee and Jack Kirby creation from Avengers issue 11, sandwiched between appearances by Kang and who had the bizarre ability to summon both historical and mythical figures to aid him. He resided in the dimension called Limbo, said to be a place between time. In issue 3 of Giant Size Avengers, Engelhart retconned Kang and Immortus' history to explain that Immortus was the future version of Kang, a more benevolent version who had stopped his dreams of conquest. The idea of variants of Kang was taken to its extreme by writer Roger Stern and artist John Buscema in issue 269 of Avengers from 1986. In that story, Kang is hunting down and killing his variants. It introduces the concept of a Council of Kangs, as well as ending with the reveal that Immortus was manipulating Kang into killing his variants to keep a streamlined timeline. However, Kang survived, and a massive cross-time Council of Kangs was seen in issue 292 from 1988. That image was even directly adapted into the Ant-Man movie. Immortus, being a future version of Kang, is definitely the biggest retcon to Kang's history. But Kang had variants. He had Rama Tut, Scarlet Centurion, now Immortus. It really opened up the door for what future writers could do. The idea of retconning in comics is an interesting one because it can go wrong. It can bog a story down in needless continuity and confuse a reader. But it can also, from time to time, open up exciting new ideas. There aren't many storytelling mediums that have lasted as long as comic books telling one continuous, ongoing story. So, retcons are definitely more prevalent in comic books than you're likely to find in other storytelling mediums. Some big retcon examples include The Flash introducing the multiverse in the Silver Age. That was a retcon that there was more than one universe with The Flash. When Captain America joined the Avengers, that was a retcon which made the Captain America stories of the 1950s retroactively not Steve Rogers. That story also killed off Bucky, Captain America's sidekick, which was famously later retconned by Ed Brubaker and introduced the wildly popular reconception of the character as the Winter Soldier. Kang's first appearance is a small retcon of who Rama Tut is, and Immortus being Kang was a big retcon, but other than that, Kang is mostly a nebulous character from the future. The future is unwritten, so even if Kang is defeated, even if Kang is killed, there's always the potential for a new version of Kang to emerge in the future and then come back to hound the Avengers. By the 2000s, Kang's history was potentially convoluted, but writer Kurt Busiek recapped it in a linear fashion in issue 9 of his limited series, Avengers Forever. That was a 12-issue storyline with artist Carlos Pacheco that had an Avengers team plucked throughout their history to stop a future where superheroes become fascist overlords of the planet. There are two other Kang variants worth noting. One was just used in a single story and called himself Victor Timely. He appeared in Avengers Annual 21 from 1992. He poses as the mayor of a small Wisconsin town in the early 1900s and influences a scientist who eventually creates the android Human Torch. Another important variant of Kang is the superhero Iron Lad. Introduced in Young Avengers Issue 1 from 2005, he was created by writer Alan Heinberg and artist Jim Chung. Issue 2 revealed that he was a young Kang. 
In this timeline, Kang came back in time to prevent himself as a teen from getting beaten up by bullies. But when the young version of himself learns that he will eventually become a brutal conqueror, he rejects this path and goes back in time to become a hero. Kang is interesting because he has no inherent superpowers. He is a man who becomes a ruthless tactician and warrior, out of boredom from the peaceful world that he was born into. He becomes obsessed with conquering time, testing himself against powerful adversaries like the Avengers, and securing his legacy with an heir. He has, at various times, tried to mold a son named Marcus into the Scarlet Centurion, gone back in time to control the mutant villain Apocalypse, and an elderly version of Kang takes on Black Bolt's son, Ahura, as a ward. What becomes fun about Kang is that his history isn't overly important. It doesn't really matter if we're meeting a Kang early or late in his career or a variant. What matters is that because time will always march forward, a version of Kang can always show up, and he's always dangerous. Kang doesn't fight for revenge or money, he fights to test himself. He doesn't rely on underlings to do something he can't. Kang never hides from a challenge, and that makes him someone we can fear, but also respect. If you're looking for a good place to start reading about Kang the Conqueror, I have three stories that I definitely recommend. One of them is Kang Against His Variants, and that's The Kang Dynasty by writer Roger Stern took place in Avengers issues 267 through 269. Another great Kang story where he actually wins, and we get to see the implications of what does Kang do once he's conquered the world and conquered the Avengers? It takes place in Avengers Volume 3, issues 41 through 54. That was by writer Kurt Busiek. And another fantastic jumping on point, the main one that I'd recommend starting with if you don't know Kang the Conqueror, is also by Kurt Busiek. That's Avengers Forever. A 12 issue story tells a complete story, then it's done. Issue 9 really streamlines his history. So, those are the places I'd recommend starting. But I'd also be curious to hear from you, A, if you have a favorite Kang story, please share that in the comments below, and B, do you have a favorite retcon of a character where they changed something important? One thing I find very impressive about Kang the Conqueror is he's been remarkably consistent when you factor in the fact that, as a serialized character that's owned by a company, he's been written by a lot of different people, but they've treated him very consistently and respectfully for the most part. We've got people like Stan Lee, Kurt Busiek, Roger Stern, a lot of different people writing Kang the Conqueror, and yet there's definitely a clear vision of who he is that's consistent across these stories. Thanks so much for watching, and please, again, I really would love it if you'd check the link in the description below to check out my campaign to get my cover for Vampirella. Thanks to Dynamite, thank you for watching, thanks to my patrons for making this happen. I'm going to see you next week with a very exciting episode. Very, very excited to talk about this artist. And until I see you next time, keep reading comics. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider hitting like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, there are merchandise links beneath the YouTube video, and you can always hit join on YouTube or visit Comic Tropes on Patreon to get access to special perks.